Luke chapter 4 verse 14. That's the Jesus that was anointed with the Holy Spirit at the rivers of Jordan. Went into the wilderness. How did they come out? And Jesus returned in the power of the... So it is not... It wasn't instant. There was a difference in time. Difference in alignment. Difference in pursuit. Between the time he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and the time he became anointed with power. Are you there? So... This was what happened to him. He had two levels of spiritual capital. Anointing with the Holy Ghost, which is the complex mixture. And then he had exercised his refinery until the products that are locked in the complex mixture started going on. Just like Stephen. Full of faith, the Holy Ghost. Then what? Full of faith. Ah. So how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing acts of philanthropy. Why? Are you afraid? Because God was with him. That is the presence. He was anointed with Holy Ghost and power. What was the effect of the Holy Ghost and power on him? He did good. So it is through the anointing and of the Holy Spirit and power that we minister to people, that we help people. That we assist people. But it is by the presence of God being with you, the presence, that you are protected. So I'm going to stop there for now. So I've introduced my message. There is a difference between the anointing of the Holy Ghost and power and the presence. He said, For God was present. It is possible for you to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power without presence. And I will show you why. Have you been to a meeting before you see the person operating something, but there was no presence feeding your spirit? You've seen it before? That person doesn't have God's approval. For what? God wants presence. Okay. Come again. Go to the book of uh, John chapter 3. John 3, quickly. This is my technical man. Where are you? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God. God be with him, presence. So Jesus did not only have the ability to walk miracles, to do signs, to do wonders. Jesus was a carrier of the presence of God. And I'm going to show you the difference between an anointed man and a presence carrier. Many people are pressing to become anointed people. They are not pressing to become presence carrier. We know that thou at a teacher come from God not because of your teaching we know that you are a teacher come from God because we the scribes and the Pharisees are teachers in our own right but we, are, we, we, don't know, we don't know if we are from God but you we know that you are a teacher come from God not because of your teaching but because you have capacity and ability to do damage to the kingdom of darkness and still survive there's a protective gear that you carry around that you don't have feedback after you molest Satan. So the anointing gives you capacity to be able to influence the people's lives. Then the presence you carry becomes an insulation from satanic injury. Are you there? So I, I will just try to introduce this message. I've, I've introduced it now. In the evening, we'll continue. Then I will show you... <laughs> I will show you what a man of presence can do. Uh, that's practically. What a man of presence can do that a man of anointing cannot do. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power... 
he had the ability to go around doing good and fulfilling works of philanthropy because God was with him. So I'm going to teach you this weekend what it means to be a carrier of God. You move with God. And I assure you, by the time we are done with the lecture, you find this is not the desire of the average young minister. The average young minister is looking for anointing. He's not looking for the present. And I don't know, senior ministers here, I don't know what you have become. An anointed man? You are empty of the presence? There's a lot for us to talk about. But when you go, go with the full package. Anointing and presence. Anointing and presence. So we'll deal more with the presence aspect. What, does, what is it? What can it do? Why should we desire the presence? There are several things you will never know if you don't know the presence. Like now, most of you don't know now that there's an angel that has come here. Most of you don't know. Because you don't know, you have not been taught in the presence. You cannot tell when the cloud gathers. When he walks in in the cool of the day, comes into your bedroom. When you need to leave your wife and attend to him. We don't know because we don't press for the presence we press for the anointing I know you don't believe when I said there's an angel that has come it's on my right hand side I know you don't believe <laughs> hey, la, 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 la. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's. Now, can you see? Did I pray? I didn't pray for her. I didn't, I've not done anything. These are the, these are the entities that are accommodated in that person. They are accommodated there. They are there. They are accommodated. As the presence starts becoming louder and louder and louder, their effect starts becoming stronger. This is a defense and a protection mechanism that God gives every minister of the gospel that is willing to come under alignment. I've not started anything. Are you there? We have not started. Now, I, if I say hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, and I do it seven times and I stop, you will see the presence will increase. You have not? Okay, let me try it. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. This is now. See, I'm not I'm not releasing anointing, I'm not doing anything. The presence is intensifying. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we've seen the hand of God move in various nations. Even places where they say, oh, witches are here. Witches.
Yeah. Yeah.